So we're now going to do an example of a proof by induction and we're gonna prove Gauss's summation formula. Legend has it that he proved it when he was six years old because he was bored in class. Um, but let's see, he probably, he didn't do it uh, as a proof by induction, let's say, but uh, well. So we wanna prove that if I add one plus two plus three and so forth, uh, these are just dots up to N, then what I get is N times N plus one divided by two. And if you want, you can write this using the sigma notation for sums. So k goes from 1 to n k, like this. And now, and when you do a proof by induction, if, if you actually want to use the induction principle, we have to talk about a set v. And the set v is supposed to be all uh, indices for which some statement holds. So this then should be all n, um, let's say natural numbers, such that this holds, let's call this star. So star true. And now let's see, this statement doesn't really make sense when n is zero. Well, it kind, well, no, not really. So here we can use n star if you want. So n star is one way of denoting all the non-zero uh, natural numbers like this. Right, and what does the induction principle say? Well, the induction principle is a way to conclude that such a set is equal to every natural number starting from something. So the induction principle says, says that if you check two things, so one is that one is in V, and the second is that if some number n is in V, then this implies that the next number is in V, then you're allowed to conclude that V is equal to all numbers one, two, three, and so forth which is what I call this n star. And we don't actually prove this, but if I instead had started with two here, then this set here would start with two. And likewise, if I'd started by with zero here, then this set would start with zero. So whatever number I use as my starting point here, that's going to be the starting point there. So now I want to use the induction principle to show that this specific V is equal to all the numbers like this, all the natural numbers bigger than one which would then say that this formula here is true for every n starting from one and going up to three. So how do I do this? Well, we check one. So is one in V? Well, is this formula star true for one? So the sum here would then start at one and end at one, meaning I'm just taking the first guy here. So that's my left-hand side. And then the question is, is it equal to this expression when I replace n by one? Well, let's do that. And this thing here is one times two divided by two, which is one. So yes, this formula here is true when n is equal to one. Notice that if n is equal to one, then these two and three don't actually mean anything. So by this, I just mean that I start by one and I continue adding until I get n, right? Until I hit the nth. So we're happy that one is true. Now we check two. So then we suppose that n is in V uh, what does that mean? So we suppose that this formula here holds for n. So I want to show that we then have n plus one is in V, meaning that if this holds for n, it holds for n plus one. So how to prove this? Well, let's write up this formula for when this n is replaced by n plus one. So we have one plus two plus three plus n and then n plus one. And we want to know if this is true, if I am taking this formula here and replacing the n by n plus one. So this is true. So is this true when I have this thing here as my right-hand side? And we can write this out. We see that this is, I'm just going to make it a little bit nicer so like this. So that's the question. So now my job is to make a chain of equalities connecting this to that using this as a tool. That is using the fact that this formula holds if you only sum up to n. As here, you can notice that, well, here, if I'm just taking the parenthesis here, then according to this, I'm get, I can replace this by that thing. So I'm getting here n, n plus one divided by two, and then I'm adding n plus one here. So now under the assumption that the summation formula is true for n, I'm getting this step here. And now I can put this on a common denominator. So let's do that. So I'm doing this at two 
and then I'm doing well a two and a two here. So I'm getting plus two n plus one. So let's make the guy up here a bit nicer. So I can factor out n plus one actually. So let's do that n plus one. And what's left if I factor out n plus one? Well, n plus two. And this thing here is exactly equal to that thing. And we are done. So we use this assumption called the induction hypothesis uh, to prove um, that the formula is then also true for n plus one. And this part of the proof here, you usually call the induction step.